He would be discussing with us uh, about precision agriculture, uh, the opportunities and challenges. And Mr. Raju Kapoor is Director of Corporate Affairs, uh, FMC Corporation. He is a former leader, Corporate Affairs, South Asia Corteva, former leader, Corporate Affairs, Dow Agriculture Sciences. Is he was the Executive Director, National Seeds Association of India, ex CEO, Ecologic Biotech Private Limited. Ex President Active Business Deeper Fertilizers and Petrochemical Corporation Limited. He was also the Ex President Activate Division Jubilee and Life Sciences. We all welcome you, sir, and uh, kindly guide us all and share your experiences and uh, help us, us uh, help us uh, for our career journey. Thank you, sir. Oh. Over, to you. Over to you, sir. So let me first of all take this opportunity to wish uh, you, Pradeshi, and all the women who are possibly in the class or who are joined here today or who have still not been able to join, but uh, wish you a very, very happy International Women's Day. <clears throat> I think it's very important that we recognize. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's very important that we recognize the power that women bring uh, to sustainability of human race. And uh, if they are not included in the growth process, it can have very major impacts, uh, certainly uh, negative impacts on the growth of the uh, humanity and the uh, country as well. So with that, let me just, uh, so how many us, uh, of us are there today in this uh, call? 27, I can see that, right? Yes. Okay, let me just share my screen in that case. It's shareable, right, from here? Yes, sir. Host has disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, so okay. can the host allow that? Yes. Sir, it has been done, it has been done, you can share. Okay, wonderful. Mm, you are a co-host as well now. Okay, let me just see. Can you guys see it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, oops, can you go bigger? Oh, this looks too big. Is that okay? <clears throat> yes, sir. All right. So let me let me just welcome all of you first of all, uh, uh, and uh, take you through some of this uh, new concepts called digitalization and precision ag. I'm sure all of you have already known about it, but let me just take you through what a little bit I can add to your value. Uh, well, let me just first introduce about uh, uh, my company, uh, FMC Corporation, and then you know, something about challenges and how does uh, Precision Ag contours itself and then sum it up in the end. How much time do I have, Nashi? 30 minutes or? No, one hour, sir. Yeah. Well, uh, so, so how much time I should take for your uh, sir, presentation? So within 30 minutes. Uh... Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, so, so <clears throat> FMC Corporation, we are essentially uh, more than a, a century old company, right? So we started in 1883. Uh, with uh, what we call as agriculture spraying operations. The spray pumps were developed uh, uh, by the promoters, uh, John Bean. And then as you see, we have moved towards becoming a, a more of a, we, we had a good travel across various businesses that we did. And then uh, towards uh, 20, 13, we thought of consolidating in the area of agriculture, wherein we, uh, you know, we, we bought over the uh, businesses uh, to consolidate ourselves. Like 2015 was the acquisition of Caminoa. Caminoa was a Europe-based uh, pesticides manufacturer, which had a global presence. Then subsequently in 27, we acquired the uh, DuPont crop protection assets. 28, uh, we further consolidated FMC and we kind of separated out uh, uh, the uh, uh, by the name uh, another company by the name of Livent, which was essentially into uh, lithium uh, businesses that we did. We also uh, divested some of our, uh, you know, what we call it the nutrition business away uh, to DuPont. Okay, so today, then FMC is now a full-fledged agricultural sciences company. So it has just the agriculture sciences. We have 
no more uh, added uh, confusion. So very focused company with uh, nearly 23 R&D uh, sites globally, 26 manufacturing sites. We are basically based out of Philadelphia in the US. Uh, the company is very focused on innovation. So 7% of our total uh, revenues are, are spent in R&D. In India, actually, we spend 8%, a percent more than the global percentage. Uh, there are about 6,500 employees uh, on the direct role, and then there are, I think, uh, plenty of them on the indirect role uh, through either contractors or otherwise, right? Now, the company is very focused on sustainability. That's very important, right? So, so we, we decided that as a company, sustainability will be our key driver. And we have set ourselves very, very stiff goals. Uh, so safety is very important. So when we have put safety, the 2025 goal that we have put is that is going to be have the uh, recordable incidence rate will have to be less than 0.1. Now, what we call as recordable incidence is basically, you know, if you're if one of your uh, uh, sales rep is going around and he, uh, he kind of comes to a position where he has to suddenly put a break not to hit a car next to it. That is a recordable in, uh, incidence in our company. So it is that up to that level that we uh, value uh, safety. Similarly, we have said that 100% of our R&D budget will be dedicated only to the sustainably advantaged products. Now, what does it mean is, you know, pesticides have uh, all kinds of uh, connotations, right? So what is important is that all the discovery that we do must go and feed into sustainability of the farming system and the global sustainability. So that's where we do. We also are setting ourselves a massive goal of community engagement, uh, where the index itself has been set at 100 straight away, saying that we will be completely engaged with the community. And uh, if you look at the environmental goal, I said, you said that we will be consuming less and recycling more. So that's, that's one of the uh, uh, targets that we are taking. And there are two SDGs that we are focused on, uh, zero hunger and life on land. Apart from it, the other one that I add in uh, India is water, safer water. Uh, so growth plans are based on technology. Company is highly focused on technology, like I said, very robust pipeline. And uh, we are in the area of precision ag as well. Right, so we just made a venture there. Uh, another company has been launched by the name of FMC Ventures. That company is kind of looking around at uh, targets globally to purchase and to consolidate, make us a big precision act player. But we are already on that uh, game. Uh, we have a strong focus on chemistry as well as biologicals. So we are possibly one of the largest uh, biologicals company also. So while we do the chemical, uh, we also do uh, this one. All our innovations are essentially coming out of field itself. See, as, as we go into the field, uh, we have a very strong R&D team, even in India, who are continuously in the field looking out for what could potentially happen to the farming. You know, what could a farmer face tomorrow? Now, and he, and, and that, information is fed into the R&D system, which then evolves solutions, which are localized solutions. And those localized solutions are then converted into uh, products and solutions and then sent back to the farmers after due testing. So, so the entire innovation is driven by the market itself, right? So it's, we don't do that, I, okay, I found this, so where do I sell this? Instead of saying, okay, where is the need that I can make a difference? and that's where we will move. Countries are very strong. I mean, so each country or each geography by itself is a, is a decision-making unit. So unlike most of the MNCs here, the decisions are done right on the ground. That's how this organization is very nimble, very fast, right? So massive uh, R&D organization, as you can see, we are going to be investing significant amount of money on R&D. And then we are expecting that the returns will also start flowing back by 2030. Uh, like I already told you, we have a, today possibly uh, industry's best pipeline 
of products rests with FMC, right? So the future is going to have lots and lots of these new products coming in. Uh, like uh, you already have uh, more or less seen this. So we have a massive library of about 1.8 million synthetic compounds, right? So out of these synthetic compounds, we draw various chemicals, various solutions uh, that could be used by the farmers globally. We have uh, major innovation centers. One of the uh, uh, innovation center is also in Hyderabad. Uh, we call it FMC Innovation Center. And that is actually engaged in discovery processes. So it's very few companies which do discovery in India. Most of them do R&D in India. We do the discovery also in India. So that feeds in here. But uh, a strong, uh, so as you can see, essentially, we are primarily a science-driven company. That's how we call ourselves an agriculture sciences company. Uh, okay, I mean, innovation, I already explained to you, right? How the innovation begins right from the farm and it brings it up. Now let's come to the key issues that today the world is facing, right? So one of it is that we got to feed a massive number of people by 2050, which will require us to literally double our turnover, or double our food production. Now, uh, the, the real challenge is that the resources are shrinking. There's a major shrinkage happening of resources. And uh, we have major challenges coming around on sustainability itself. And these are driven by actually the dwindling inputs uh, or what we call as the raw materials in agriculture, right? So the water is shrinking. I mean, the, the land is shrinking because there's a lot of land being taken away by other purposes. Also, a lot of land is also getting sick and not uh, remaining capable for agriculture. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on agriculture to be a balanced and a sustainable operation rather than just being a chemical fed, chemical led uh, business. So. Uh, what we call is a uh, integrated crop management is becoming more, uh, uh, I mean, that's important. So sustainability is one of the key global trends. And, you know, on the E, S and G, uh, uh, the companies are being evaluated. So we are a listed company, right? So everybody who invests in our company is looking out for how, are, how do you score on the sustainability? Uh, only then I'm going to be investing you. Second challenge that we have is the input use efficiency. Uh, before I come to that, let me just come to climate change first, right? So climate change, all of you know, right? So because of this major climate change, there's a serious disruption happening. Uh, what we knew yesterday is no more valid tomorrow because the, the, everything is changing so much. The expectation of the consumers is changing. They are demanding traceability. They think, okay? show me what are you producing, what are you using before you feed me. So the consumer preferences are changing. Safer food, they, every, I mean, all of us, like uh, all of us want to know, is my food safe? Is my water safe? Am I having the safe food? Are you using the right products? Are you using the right processes? So these are big talent. Globally, I think if you look at all those uh, Walmarts and others, uh, or, or Pepsi's or Coca-Cola's, they are all faced with these questions. Every time they come to uh, any investor meet or any meet, town hall, these are the questions they are asked. Are you safe? And are you nutritious? Are you adding to my nutrition or you're feeding me a junk? So that's the new generation, which is, and these, these are big customers, right? New generation, because they are all earning. So they demand companies to look at that. Then, uh, then, then the input use efficiency that I talked about. See, today, if you look at the way we irrigate our fields, right? So the, we just flood the field completely. The way we use fertilizer, urea, you know, bags of urea just sprinkled all over. Where it goes, nobody knows. So, so, the, so the input use efficiency is very poor in today's agriculture. If you look at urea, the input use efficiency of urea alone in India, I think is not more than 30%. Which means what? 70% of the imports are either going down in the soil system, soil water and spoiling it, or they're going up and spoiling the larger environment. 
Similarly, uh, look at pesticides. If you do indiscriminate use of pesticides, they're all coming and settling down. And I mean, uh, they're not really, uh, you know, the, the, the return that you require per unit of input is not really so much, the wastage is much higher. Similarly, if you look at water, you know, that's where the prime minister has come back and said, okay, more crop per drop, right? What does it mean? Essentially, we're saying is water is now a very scarce commodity. Now, if these are the trends that you see globally, then what you are looking at, okay, how do I survive in these? And that's where you are, when you're looking around, you are looking at what are the technologies available globally? And there are large number of disruptive technologies which are coming in, right? We know, first of all, the uh, satellite itself is becoming a great source of uh, knowledge to us. It's feeding in a lot of data to us and how do we use, so data is becoming very important. All the things related to data are becoming very, very crucial because then you're saying, okay, if I don't have use of resources, what technology do I use to make my farming very precise? so that I don't waste inputs. And that's where precision agriculture comes into picture, which then starts to use all the new technologies like the IOTs of the world. Uh, I'm sure uh, you are all going through that, right? Because that's the new thing that you should really be knowing. The IOTs or the deep learning or the, uh, you know, the uh, drones uh, or the, you know, how do you, how do you uh, learn in layers and then learn to consolidate all the layers to come to a decision-making process? So essentially all this is now taking you to precision ag. And what is precision ag? Essentially, it's a management strategy, right? Crop management strategy where you're saying, okay, I will collect data, very important. And I will collect data in three or four phases, right? I'll collect the data of soil. What's happening in my soil? That's the data I'm going to collect. Then what's happening in my crop, I'm, uh, on my plant, I'm going to collect that data. What's happening to the environment? I'm going to collect that. And then I'm going to put them one on top of the other and then see, okay, where am I going? Right? So then it processes them, all the data is then put together and processed, and then you analyze them. And then you say, okay, what kind of data do I take? So I'm taking my temporal data, I'm taking spatial data, I'm taking uh, individual data. And all these data are then combined. Then you are coming to a decision support system. When you say decision support system means farmer needs to decide what should he be doing, when he should be doing, how much of it he should be doing, and why should he be doing at all, if at all he has to do it. And why should he do that? Because he is looking at how do I improve my resource use efficiency? How do I improve my productivity? Per unit of input that I'm investing, how do I maximize my profits? And then he's looking at quality. Am I able to produce the quality which the market demands or I'm just producing something and throwing it in the market and then not getting anything in return for it? Profitability, that's very crucial for the farmers right now. And then while I'm doing all this, is my agriculture production sustainable? Is my soil sustainable, first of all? Will I have this soil tomorrow? Like if you go to Punjab, Punjab soils are almost barren. It's, it's almost like living out of, um, you know, what we call is, uh, if somebody starts eating chemical diet, that's what Punjab is doing. You know, you're, you're peeling, you're, you're popping up pills of vitamin D, this, nutrient this, 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 and so your soil as a living medium is no longer there because you misuse the soil. So that's where what the agriculture, so this is the kind of agriculture technology which kind of, you know, it, 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 it decides that I will be using AI, I'll be using cloud computing, big data, blockchain, and I will then split my field into multiple small, 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 small segments. And then for each segment, I will see what does it need? Does it need water right now? And each segment, each let's say square meter, will tell me what do I need right now? Because I'm also profiling my soil, I'm profiling my crop, and I'm also profiling the temperatures. And then I'm also de developing a predictive algorithm, which tells me 
that you know somewhere with this kind of parameters, seven days from now, I might expect a pest infestation and this pest may come because that has been established through all the data that I've collected over the years. And this guy is already preparing up in advance and saying, okay, these are the areas that I need to enter. These are the blocks that I will be addressing. So here you are talking about, instead of going blanket, you're talking about very precise on the spot. And what we call as, uh, uh, sometimes we also define it as site specific agriculture. So you're looking at what needs to be done at the site and then you do exactly that, right? If the plant requires moisture, how much moisture does it require? And if it requires moisture, there's a system that triggers immediate drips that help him uh, get the requisite amount of water and then it stops again. Fertilizers, you know, there are no blanket uses though. So, and then you're looking at using newer uh, tools like drones. So these drones or robots or intelligent agriculture, uh, what we are trying to do in drone, again, you know, what I mean, the industry is doing is, we are looking at drones to collect data, right? You've got data from satellite, then you have drones which are fitted with uh, data collection. So you're collecting all those, what we call as the RGB data, and then developing layers of data. And these layers that put together for a decision-making support system, right? Okay. So this is the agriculture that we start calling it smart agriculture. This is completely different from what has been happening so far. Okay. All right. So, uh, right up to this point, any questions? Then I move forward. So what you're saying essentially is it's an integration of knowledge data when it is converted into knowledge. So it's basically integration of knowledge with the decision support system and with the inputs application. So you're combining all the three and you're automating the whole process so that in the process, your even your manpower requirement goes down significantly. You're making it more sustainable. What you used to for example, if you are on a crop spring operation, uh, one individual will say something like two acres in a day, two and a half acres in a day per day uh, of pesticide. But one drone can do almost 100 acres per day with different sorties, right? It can do 100 acres per day. So, so you're making the agriculture that much more efficient. And then the, then the farmer does not have to incur loss in the next, after the two and a half acres, the land that is there, if he, the farmer, if the laborer is not able to spray on that particular day, the pest would have got some more damage to the crop or the, the next day. So not happening. Similarly, you're giving exactly at the moment when the, at the, at the time when the nutrient is required, you're feeding the nutrient to the crop, right? So this is where the whole thing is coming around and it is trying to address multiple things at one time. It is trying to address the need to enhance productivity, to conserve resources, and to enhance efficiencies of agriculture. Okay. Yeah. So I, I mean, more of a, a pictorial diagram, but essentially you're looking at uh, what fer fertilizers. Then you're analyzing leaf. Then you're looking at environment. You're looking at moisture. You're looking at insects. All those things put together come into a decision support system. But and these go on to feed the farmers. You know, a lot of people say, okay, what will they do in crop countries like ours? But our farmers also require significant amount of uh, support system. So what it does essentially is, in the smart farming, it kind of lowers the costs. And, and the digitalization which is happening, as you can see, uh, so the farming has to be sustainable, also the farmer has to be sustainable. So he has to manage all these things that you see on this paper here. He has to grow the right crop, grow it the right way so that it gets to the right market for the right price. He has to have the ease of farming, he or she. Uh, I think 40% of the farmers in India are she. So let me just not use the word he. And he here implies that she also, okay, simultaneously. So <clears throat> on a woman's day, you old. Similarly, quality, okay, <clears throat> managing climate change. So so all these things are addressed. And then you, you can also integrate it. This whole system then gets integrated with the market. 
that's the next level where you are looking at various players integrate themselves into these kind of uh, systems and these systems are actually what are they doing they are actually looking at the central portion is how do you grow then you're looking at farmer what do i need then you're looking at let's say for example input players what do i need and then there's a supply of inputs to farmer and return of payment coming back to him so all these systems just feed into a uh, precision ag uh, how much time do i have now Avi? i think i have covered i had got just four more minutes so let me just take you through some more there are i mean these technologies can also help us so i'm just going one step back and saying uh, touching a little bit of ag tech also you know this agriculture the new ag tech it also the new digitalization is also helping companies discover newer molecules today uh, i mean you'd be shocked but uh, to discover one molecule of pesticide it takes about 286 million dollars and it takes 11 years of data uh, 11 years of hard work to commercialize just to bring to the market just one product now here we use this agri-tech, once you start using the ag-tech, you are kind of shortening the screening period drastically. Similarly, diagnostics is the big area coming up where the crop, where you have the systems in the field which tell you exactly what you need when, right? So I, mean, I, I talked about it a little bit, but a pest's occurrence, you would know it I mean, today what is happening is whenever a farmer goes to the field, he, I mean, normally he knows when he sees a lot of damage already has happened in the field. Only then he comes to know of it. But here, in this case, he will have diagnostics and then a precise solution to address that diagnostics. All these are applied with precise application as well. So application could be either the intelligent uh, irrigation systems or fertilizer uh, drip systems or uh, pesticide application drones or whatever. Also, they are linked to the buyers. So they're also collecting data from the buyers and giving data to the buyer, saying, this is what I'm doing. This is my agricultural practices. So the food that comes out has a full traceability, right? So, And that also helps him uh, take the decision, uh, a smart decision here. So all this put together is becoming a smart tech. So the smart tech is actually uh, moving in two directions. One is it is moving towards the market. Secondly, it is moving towards the farming. And it is integrating, ultimately, it is integrating the two together. So tomorrow's, what we say is the food system. So now both, both of them when combined, they are actually creating a food system. So the food system of tomorrow would largely be a smart system. And a smart system I mean, you already know a little bit about it, right? So if you're if you're a buyer in uh, some of those uh, e-commerce sites, you see how intelligent they are becoming. They are picking up all your data and then they are coming back with solutions for you. I look at Facebooks or all those things, right? So they are they are collecting your data and coming back to you with solutions that you possibly have not thought of, but they have. So similar things is, are going to happen here where at one point in time, these systems will also decide what crop farmer should grow. So system will tell him, okay, grow this because sometimes next year, the prices of this product may be better compared to the others. And they would be integrating the global data and then feeding solutions to people, right? So, so the entire decision-making support system will be becoming very interesting, very tech-driven, right? Okay, I mean, so, so uh, and, and the entire tech is basically going to come in the hands of the farmer, the mobile itself. Your mobile phone is going to be one of a, I think the mobile phone itself may undergo a lot of change. So who knows tomorrow it is your hand or a chip in the hand, which is telling you all this, but, uh, or, or maybe, you know, you're, you're projecting it somewhere uh, out, outside you, but somewhere the these platforms we are going to create the ecosystem for precision ag, also for smart tech, and also for smart food system to work together. So I'm just combining the three together, right? So, uh, of course, some of the challenges that we have are essentially 
infrastructural challenges, but I think they are going to be addressed very soon and very fast. So uh, we're already moving towards 5G and as 5G comes in, uh, as and when it comes in, I think most of this thing will get over. The government is already putting up, uh, every village is becoming a hub for data, every village. So, so this new system, new uh, government uh, initiatives are actually connecting the villages. The root, the data are going to be compiled everywhere, right? So, so, so uh, let me just conclude my part. Uh, this is uh, I'm just taking it slightly broader than precision and but this digitalization is going to disrupt the way you do agriculture, the way you do food. Right, so complete all the inefficiencies are going to be the targets for startups. Because I'm addressing you, I want you to think in those lines to be the startups. And this whole system is full of inefficiencies. So please focus on them. These are all live business opportunities for people like you, right? Where you can create those win-win solutions uh, you know, we used to think that, you know, adoption is going to, it's going to take a lot of time. No, the time it took us to come here, the 50 years that took us to come here is going to take us less than three years to cover more than the 50 years knowledge. So it's going, it's coming real fast. Disruption, the rate of disruption is going to be so fast that we will not have time to uh, think that, oh, I used to do this, right? So that's not going to happen. So startups are going to disrupt. That's where a role of people like you come in, who can do all kinds of uh, uh, things. Rural economies themselves will transform themselves completely. There are going to be intelligent systems in the rural areas, and they will be driven by the farmers themselves. Can you imagine? So we call farmers illiterate or less literate or maybe less educated, but they are the people who are going to be driving this whole uh, innovation all across. There'll be newer models coming up. A lot of people will come for offering solutions for agriculture. They will go the integrated solution to the farmer. So farmer, instead of, you know, these days I say it jokingly, instead of uh, having a solution which is rupees per liter, it will be rupees per hectare. Right? So the solutions will move to rupees per hectare. And then that's where farmer will know exactly if there's a company which will come and sell, tell him, okay, I will look after your entire intelligent piece. I charge you so much. And that's the charge that will come per hectare. Employability, you know, as, as management students, I think you should be very carefully looking at this line. Employability will be under a tremendous change, you know, what you read in the college, what you read last week in your management school is going to be absolutely irrelevant when you pass out. Absolutely irrelevant. So what's very important is that we need to learn beyond syllabus. Go beyond syllabus all the time. Your syllabus is not going to make you employable because syllabus are trailing the innovations innovations are leading the market. So if you want to be leader, you will have to lead from the front. You students must partner the disruption and the innovation. So let me stop here and welcome your questions. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name yes, is Abhinav yeah, Nish. Sir, how to reduce, sir, how to reduce the cost of cultivation by the adopting precision agriculture? The tools used in precision agriculture is very sophisticated, and uh, our country farmer is small land holding. So, how can we reduce the cost cost of cultivation by the precision agriculture, sir? Excellent question. Thank you, Avish, for putting it up because that's one question which is largely being asked by everybody. See, uh, 
I, I just now said, right, what you read last week will be irrelevant. So the way you see farmers today will be irrelevant two years down the line. You know, let, let's look at some of those new bills which are coming up, some of the new uh, things that the government is trying to do. What are they trying to do? They are trying to digitize the entire agriculture. And you may not know today, but it'll be a, what are people like Alliance focusing on? They are trying to connect every village, every farmer. And this mobile phone will connect everybody together. So you need not, farmer need not invest everything on his own. It possibly could be community investment or government-led investment or private investors who would put up all the setups. But, <coughs> sorry, somewhere a consolidation, what you see as FPOs. So FPOs could be another point of uh, integration. You know, farmer producer organizations. And I think I would encourage all of you to take time and work with some FPOs, definitely work with them before you pass out. Okay, go take a job with them and try and work with them. You will understand how you can, what you're thinking today, small farmer, not money, all those things will go away because newer solutions are going to be much more robust they are going to be much more technology driven. As I talk to you today, I think it, it looks rather utopian, but I'm very confident. Uh, you know, I was, I was, I'm trying to work with the government of India in allowing drones for application of pesticides. It's almost taken me, what, two years trying to convince them. Thanks to the locust, they suddenly realized, oh, no, 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 I need to use drones for application because that's the fastest way to do it. Having learned that, we are still trying to help them develop the guidelines that they should allow because these, all these technologies have um, some implications which can be misused as well. So I am very confident, uh, and I'll give you an example, China. China has same landholder uh, pattern, uh, same large number of farmers, small, small farmers, average land holding is possibly equal to or slightly uh, closer to India. What they have done is the drone manufacturers like XAGs or DGIs, they have in without any regulation in two years, the application of pesticide to drones, guess how much it is today? How many hectares they would have covered in just two years? Make any wild guess. Anybody? With two years using GIS, I think over the whole world. Sorry, sorry, you, you, okay. Uh, let me let me just ease it out for you guys. They have already knocked off last year 30 million hectares area under drones, just in two years. Now imagine those farmers who are using today drone would not have dreamt also. You know, they were all busy using the knapsack sprayer, da 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 da, and then trying to do. And suddenly, in two years' time, they are on a different plane altogether. I think the precision ag is actually going to start from cash crops and then going to come into uh, cereal crops a little later. Cash crops are the where, where farmer is very sensitive, where the input use efficiencies are, are, are can be very profitable. So there will be models coming up, which is profit sharing models. People may come and share profits with the farmers or farmers may share profit with those companies and then this will come so so why the question is very valid i think you will see so that's the role for you as 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 the youth as the disruptors as the digitally enabled generation you have to facilitate that faster and and it's, it's happening it's happening we can see it is happening and you will see it as you come out Okay. Any other question? Very good morning, sir. Morning, sir. sir. I'm good morning, morning, sir. My name is. Hello. Hi. Okay, Akhilesh, you want to go? Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sir. Sir, I want to know. As we know, 
75% farmers is uneducated in our country then how to connectivity in rural area for this agriculture development i think uh, the covid has proved you wrong akhilesh all the farmers how to get are they are getting all the information over their mobile can you imagine we have completely shifted our demand generation onto the digital system as it's very little on the ground it's most of it is digital everything what do you think the women in the village are doing during covid time they are learning new skills they are learning newer uh, newer ways of enhancing efficiency literacy farmer is learning so much over his mobile phone every day he is is getting you know so it's so easy the, the, this phone has become so easy handy that while we were say 75% but look at the penetration of mobiles in india and look at the rural penetration of mobiles right so it's mobile which is now uh, empowering people empowering the farmers to come out and learn those who still do not come out to learn possibly would be left behind but they will they will always be you know so so there are early adopters and then there are you know the guys in the center average guys and then there will be laggards so laggards will always be there those 5 10 15% laggards but i see uh, i am very optimistic about our farmers they don't need to be literate but if they know how to operate their uh, mobile phone you know even today i can tell you there are uh, there are uh, uh, there are apps being developed where the farmer has to do nothing he has to you also might be knowing right some identifying the plant all you have to do is look at the uh, plant and it tells you this is the plant the next level of that is you know, focus your camera towards the plant and it tells you what disease is this it is third layer which is coming up is focus your camera towards that and it tells you this leaf is deficient in these 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 minerals the next level which is coming out is saying okay in these many days <laughs> so so what i'm saying is is more experiential now so the pure literacy literacy may not be very uh, limiting factor you know my uh, tell me how two year old children are able to do so much in mobile give to any two year child mobile and he will entirely operate the mobile he has not read the a b c d till date but he can operate the mobile yes or no yes sir yeah yes. how is he able to do it yes sir this is how it trial is. and error yeah so this is how the things will flow and they will flow they will flow very very fast don't worry and if we don't flow faster than them we will be obsolete okay uh, so uh, muslim din you are asking something Yes, sir. You said that uh, using uh, Internet of Things and AI and uh, GIS all have their, uh, you know, the government is limiting it to an extent because there has uh, some misuse that, that can be possibly happening. So, uh, to what extent do you think GIS should be available to the public, and uh, what extent should uh, and who should be having the access to these uh, technologies? No, the technologies will have to be democratized there's no way you cannot de- democratize technology so technologies will be democratized only thing is there will come regulations the way you see on the facebooks and twitters people are now coming back putting up restrictions right and it's not only india it's everywhere because people see there's a misuse drones look at how much <laughs> the use of drones for dropping drugs in punjab is so high and dropping guns in punjab is so high so so when you have the drones on the sky you got to be extremely careful on what are you allowing so obviously there is a there is a lot of interministerial work happening so i am a part of that committee uh, there is a lot of work happening and and they are looking at enabling uh, without giving the opportunity to misuse the technology so there will be democratization of the technology definitely however the 
it will come with some responsibility and it'll come with certain what we call as costs if misused. I mean, all of you know, right? In China, almost everybody is tracked. Every citizen of China is tracked 24 seven. If you ask President Z, what did XYZ in Hangzhou province, in this village did, he should be able to tell you that. And he should be able to tell you that in five minutes time. We will have systems. How do you think the public will react to that kind of regulations when it, come, when it comes to India? No, I think the regulation, see, India being a democratic country, there will be, uh, I mean, it'll take time coming in because there'll be a lot of uh, opposition, but it'll come through. Okay. Manisha, Manisha is not understanding this. She's, she's just given up. Okay, what next? No, sir, I'm understanding. I was in problem in eyes. Joking, sir. Joking. What happens, you know, this, look at technology, right? Yesterday, when people slept in your class, you could never know. Today, anybody taking a small, you know, even if you blink the eyes, the teacher knows exactly who is blinking and who is not attentive. That's technology for you. And, and and put AI to that and they will know exactly this student around this time will definitely do something. So, <laughs> okay, that's, that's just a joke, okay. Go ahead, <clears throat> next question, please. Uh, that's good, I have a question, sir. Yeah, go ahead, Prince. Uh, no. So like you said, we have to go on a mode of constantly reskilling ourselves or learning new things. So, because whatever we learn today, it's becoming invalid tomorrow. So what is the practical approach? Like how should we go about it? Because it's only about learning things. So how to reskill? Like first, what should we follow? How, what kind of steps we could do to practically get ourselves updated? Uh, see, one thing is certain that uh, you have to set yourself a target now. You know, a free float uh, may not have much takers in the future. So as long as you are able to set yourself a target, it will be much easier for you to know exactly what to learn. Because today, the beauty about this time is that you can learn anything. And you are not limited by time. You are not limited by anything, right? You have the huge internet. You have the Google Babas sitting there who are always willing to teach you more and more and more. So depends on what do you want to do, uh, actually. But then I, I would say that if you if you're not technologically savvy, digitally savvy, you have no role in future. You know you could. I mean, at least not. You would not be among the uh, the preferred candidates, if I may say it in politely. Uh, if you do not know how to use uh, digital tools. Oh, well, challenge for you tomorrow. Uh, I'll give you my example, okay? So I was the CEO or president of the company. So I had, what, what, five assistants with me. You know how many I have today? Not even a single one. Why? Is it, am I demoted? No. It's just that the time is expecting you to take full charge yourself. You can't be depending on any second, third, fourth person. So you, you have to be extremely digitally savvy to move forward. So my suggestion would be at least on the, on the emerging, <clears throat> uh, maybe I, let me just check if I can share on the chat box one of those links. Um, there are some evolving technologies. I would recommend all of you to read about it. I mean, just type evolving technologies, a lot will come. Read it, irrespective of whether you understand it, don't understand it, read it more and more. Um, where is that? 
I just shared yesterday with my team. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can pass it on to you. You can circulate to everybody. But yeah. that's, a, that's the latest report, right? So uh, uh, I think it's UNCTAD entire report on newer technology. So look out for, I mean, just give me an example. Similarly, there are n number of things happening. Could you imagine that uh, people like Microsoft are big time employers of agricultural agencies? We always thought that we uh, may not be good employers, but uh, we may not have scope there, but tremendous scope. Big time. All the tech companies are looking at agriculture and rural market as a big opportunity. So can you combine the two? Can you be the bridge? Less important. Okay. All right. Anything else? Participants, kindly mute yourself. Okay, good. So uh, let me, uh, if there are no questions, then uh, let me thank you all guys. You know, it's very important that we come and learn from you because you are a full generation ahead of us. And I'm talking of not only the human generation, you're you are a full technology generation ahead of us, right? So I continue to learn every day from youth and um, always very happy to support anybody who, who wishes to know anything more, uh, more than welcome uh, to do it. But see that you know you also are triggering your syllabus and do not so so feed this in into your faculty saying okay we need to get this further we need to sharpen this out they will bring you faculties they will get you so are you guys reading about artificial intelligence are you guys reading about deep learning are you guys reading about it so can they be part of your curriculum and how do we manage that tomorrow as managers? No, think about it. Thank you, sir. We, we would definitely work on it, sir. Yeah. And, uh, Priyanka, any question from you? Uh, today is Women's Day, so you are allowed one question after the time also. No, sir, the concept is very clear to me. Sorry? Sir, concept is clear to me. Uh, everything was fine. I understand. Wow. Look at that. This is the generation. It just needs one hour and they are knowing everything. Okay, good. So let me uh, wish you all uh, uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, International Women's Day and I wish you all uh, lots of success. Get, you know, have lots of fun and learn, learn every day. There's no substitute. Thank so good you. luck to you and thank you for giving me this opportunity to be talking to brilliant minds like you. Uh, uh, it's an honor, sir. It's an honor to sorry. have you uh, with us and uh, we would uh, definitely look forward for more such sessions with you. Sir. You're welcome. Yes, so thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And, and God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir.